Terrifying Ways to Go, Episode 4, No Way Out. Jesse and Damien, two workers of a Kansas City power plant, have just been informed one of its three turbines has begun to lose power. It is believed this sudden loss in power could be due to a faulty purge valve. When functioning properly, this valve should only be open to allow scalding hot, overpressurized steam, a route to escape the facility. So after a short conversation, Jesse and Damien grab a few tools and begin making their way towards the room that houses the valve. Now in order to reach this location, they must take an elevator up a few floors where the doors will then open directly into that room. Little did they know, the absolutely horrifying fate that awaited them on the other side. Unknown at the time, that valve had all but completely blown apart, thus allowing this extremely hot, superheated steam to completely fill the room. And we're not talking gradually, I mean steam is quite literally blasting out of the line. What's worse is, the initial blowback of all of this pressure is currently spraying directly towards the door of that elevator. And when they finally open, the steam rolls in, exposing both men to temperatures of well over 600 degrees Celsius, or 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, effectively sealing their fate in the process. In addition to this, it is very likely that as that elevator began to stop, they would have instantly known what was about to happen. As of mid-2021, the family of Jesse Henson was awarded $222 million in a wrongful death lawsuit, with the family of Damian Burchett following close behind. Back in August of 2021, Hurricane Ida had just made its way through Louisiana, leaving an absolute wake of destruction in its path. And like many, a 71-year-old man by the name of Timothy had elected to stay behind, thus riding out the storm alongside his wife. Now their biggest concern throughout the course of that storm had been the ever-rising water levels, and Tim had been periodically going out onto his front porch in order to see how close that water line was getting to their home. Well, by the evening of August 30th, the wind had begun to die down. The water levels had stopped rising, and the couple were finally given the opportunity to inspect the rest of their home for damage. With that, they grab their jackets, Tim grabs a flashlight, and they begin making their way towards the front door. But as soon as Tim steps outside, he is snatched by a 12-foot alligator that proceeds to drag him off into the night. Now, while his wife immediately contacted emergency services, she was told they would have to wait for the water levels to recede, as there was just simply no means of accessing that area at that point. With that, they take down a missing persons report, and within just a few days, they begin to receive more and more calls about this giant alligator that had just been roaming around the neighborhood. It was at this time a couple of men came out in order to hunt down that alligator, and when they finally caught it, they would unfortunately find the remains of Timothy inside that beast. Back in 2002, a guy out of Manhattan had just been out for a night of drinking with a couple of friends. Now, as the night begins to wind down and they're making their way home, an argument breaks out between himself and another member of the group. Well, this argument would quickly escalate into a full-blown fight between the two men. And while there is much debate over what actually happened next, here is one of two leading scenarios ultimately leading to the same devastating conclusion. It is said that at some point, one of those two men, a man by the name of Keith Masters, overpowered the other man lifting him up and throwing him 15 feet down into an open manhole. And although, yes, a fall from this height alone is more than enough to take someone's life, this, unfortunately, was only the beginning of a much bigger problem. Little did they know, that manhole had been housing a leaking hot water line that, just a few days earlier, had completely ruptured, effectively leaving the man waist deep in boiling water, while at the same time being completely engulfed in extremely hot steam. And to make matters even worse, although first responders and everyone on scene could hear his cries for help, the steam was so thick and so hot they were unable to physically get to him. It was at this point they began lowering various retrieval systems in hopes he was still able to follow their instructions, but unfortunately, the damage had already been done. By then, he was simply too weak and too injured to comply. This man's name was Kyle McGarity often referred to as Sean Doyle, and he had spent the last 10 minutes of his life essentially being cooked at well over 300 degrees. Now it's worth pointing out, Keith Masters was originally charged with murder in the second degree, but to the dismay of Kyle's family, those charges were later dropped, leading to a very heated debate as to whether or not he was actually thrown or whether or not he fell. My friends and frenemies alike, we will see you on the next one.